On Thursday, January 23rd, about 300 people from various parts of Vermont's business community attended the annual economic conference in Burlington, hosted by the State Chamber of Commerce. The event provides an overview of how the state's economy is doing and where it might be headed. Betsy Bishop is the executive director of the Vermont State Chamber of Commerce. One of the things that we really try to do with this economic conference is make sure that uh, people get all their answers that they need about the economy. We often have people talking about the economy and their personal viewpoint of that, whether that's healthy or not, what the jobs are like, what the economic trends are. And what we do is we bring in real economists, state economists, national economists to give a picture of what Vermont looks like and then also how that compares to the region or to the um, other states. So that's been really helpful. Demographics and population growth, or the relative lack of it, were to no one's surprise among the frequently mentioned concerns of the featured speakers, along with the other issues many rural states like Vermont face as employment opportunities ebb and flow. Matt Barowitz, the Economic and Labor Market Information Chief for the Vermont Department of Labor, got things started for the audience who filled the conference center at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel Complex. He noted how the state's recovery from the 2008-09 recession has been a protracted one and walked the audience through several key sectors of the state's economy and how those are performing. After his talk, we asked Mr. Barowitz for his thoughts on Southern Vermont and what communities here could be doing to help themselves or see as pathways out of a stagnant workforce and population scenario. But I think the opportunity for partnership is, is uh, high in that uh, there's a lot of organizations down there focused on economic development and focused on training opportunities and promoting those. So I think from a regional perspective, it's knowing what your economy is and what it isn't and making sure that you're using uh, good data to understand what, how you're how you're generating economic wealth now, just make sure those industries are supported and continue, but also what are the opportunities for growth in the future and which industries are we currently importing services for that we could provide ourselves and help keep some of those dollars regionally as well as build up export components to help bring new dollars in. Demographics, workforce, and population were also a key component of a presentation that followed by Mary Beth Mattingly and Assistant Vice President of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Computer and mathematical jobs, business operations specialists, and legal. But the places that have declined are things like electric, I'm sorry, extraction, production and manufacturing. But these were jobs that provided a decent middle class lifestyle. People didn't need to go to college to, you know, maybe own a home, have a car, raise their children in, in, you know, live in the suburbs or or in a a modest house in in the city or in the rural places. These were jobs that provided a living. In adjoining rooms, other breakout sessions were being held. One on how changing demographics and tax laws will impact financial and estate planning, and a deep dive into Vermont's $6 billion state budget, led by Susan Young, the Secretary of the State's Administration Agency, Adam Gresham, the Commissioner of the State's Department of Finance and Management, and Greg Bolio, the commissioner of the state's tax department. We caught up with Commissioner Gresham afterwards and asked him what his primary concerns were when it came to the state budget. A number of things keep me up at night, but two things probably more than others, and that would be, as we spoke earlier today, the education fund. Um, You know, our uh, spending on education continues to grow while our student population continues to sink. Uh, and it's been a, a big challenge and we know that uh, schools today are not like schools uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, um, but the spending has outpaced um, our ability to keep up with it and it has had a, a large impact on property taxes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is our um, unfunded liabilities. Um, that, that means paying for uh, the pensions of uh, retired teachers, uh, retired teachers' health care, uh, state employees, uh, and state employees' health care um, after they retire, uh, all of which are obligations that we have and we intend to meet. But uh, the cost uh, has gone up dramatically, and um, my worry is that um, the ability to continue to pay um, is taking away uh, revenue that we could use for other uh, parts of uh, general government. So that, that has been a worry. And we've looked at this and um, we certainly hope to work with the treasurer and uh, state employees union and the like to try to figure out a way that we can sustain um, our obligations but make them more financially uh, feasible. There were a smattering of people from Southern Vermont at the conference and one of them was Jason Dolmich the president of Bennington-based MSK Engineering and Design. I think we're nearing, we're nearing a breakpoint. 
Um, and I think what we can see with sort of our pop, with our sort of um, our human capital is that there we're going to reach a point in the very near future where there's not going to be a replacement option, and that when those positions go unfilled, essential positions goes unfilled, then things will stop working. Um, and I think that we have a real fear. I mean, I think there's a real uh, threat there. The I think that from what I understand, and, uh, I'm not an economist, but the more we can connect with urban populations in a meaningful way and the more that we can make uh, transportation and travel and provide similar uh, sort of equivalencies of experience um, are going to end and create more dense urban, more dense populations in the state of Vermont. I think that's, we have to, that, that's what's going to allow people to uh, live here and move here and, and have meaningful connections and be satisfied. The conference concluded with an address from Jean Charest, the former Deputy Prime Minister of Canada and Premier of Quebec, who was introduced by Vermont's former Governor Jim Douglas and who discussed the trading and cultural connections between Quebec and Vermont. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.